Hey guys, it's GTSS back with another video, and in this video I'll be reviewing and demoing and going over the final release of Windows 10. So I just upgraded from Windows 8.1, and the upgrade system, the installation is pretty easy actually. Once you get the notification to download it, everything works as you'd expect. Um, it's a pretty simple process. It took me, you know, two hours, because uh, it's a pretty big download, pretty, you know, long installation, but it works. The installation's fine. It's pretty good pretty easy not not too complicated so start menu is the first new feature everyone's been talking about it and it's pretty awesome you can resize it to you know your liking uh, you've got your most used apps here you can't pin into the most used but you can pin everything here uh, that includes desktop and universal apps uh, and th this is this is a start menu you know you can pin some favorite locations down here so file explorer documents videos downloads whatever you need to do music you can pin it here and you got settings and power you can also pin some other stuff like network and everything down here but this is all i need you've got jump lists for some uh you know desktop apps no universal apps have jump lists yet and then you got your all apps uh that works just like it did in windows 7 it's an alphabetical list you can click the alphabet to zoom out and you know go to a particular alphabet and it works as you would expect. Universal and desktop apps are, you know, acting as one here. And that's definitely nice to see because they were two different OSs in Windows 8. Uh, so everything works fine here in terms of start menu. You know, it's pretty awesome. We got some sick translucency going on here. And you can see that all across the UI. It's in the start menu. It's on the taskbar. It's on, you know, every single part of the UI that relates to the taskbar. So next I want to go over the action center which I just clicked on. Here's where you're going to get your notifications. So whether that be from a universal app like Mail and Calendar or a desktop app like Chrome or Spotify, you're going to see your notifications pop up right here and then you can clear them. You've got your quick settings here uh, and you can choose which four you want here and it's actually pretty handy. You can click expand to see you know the in all of them and it's pretty awesome and handy. And of course you've got your translucency here which makes it look really really cool. Here's your clock. Um, you know, everything, very streamlined UI. The translucency is everywhere, and it looks really cool. So let's go to the Settings app, because Settings is completely different. Uh, no longer is the Control Panel the default Settings app, but it's the Settings app. That's the default Control, the default Settings app. <laughs> and you can pretty much do everything you need to do on a basic level in Settings, whether that be, you know, controlling your resolution, uh, you know, various apps, sizes, uh, storage, power, colors, translucency, Wi-Fi, passwords, account, everything is here. But if you want the, you know, really, really detailed stuff, you will have to go into the control panel. And the settings app will guide you there. For example, if I want to do change adapter options, it'll take me into the control panel and take me into this. Uh, so the control panel is still here. I can still access it as I just did but they don't want you to access it and and you won't be accessing it much everything i say 90 percent of your settings will be controlled in the settings app for example right clicking on the desktop clicking on personalize settings app display settings settings app these both were things that happened in the control panel but now we're in the settings app and you'll see that throughout the operating system control panel is being pushed back and settings is coming to the forefront and another new feature I wanted to talk about is Cortana. Now, Cortana's been a sort of iffy feature. Microsoft's been pushing it like, yeah, woo. But using it for, you know, I've been using Windows Technical Preview for like seven months. Um, I've been using this actual Windows 10 build, Windows 10 final release, for like two days. And I can say that Cortana I've used like twice. Uh, it's not really that useful in terms of what you think of when you think of Cortana like Windows Phone. You've got your cards. You know, it'll give you your forecast. It'll you can look up some pretty basic facts. Uh you know, you can insert what news you want to see and it'll give you the news that you want to see. Uh but in general it's not useful. Like it's only you're only going to click on Cortana if you have nothing else to do on your computer and you're just like clicking random stuff or exploring the operating system. Hey Cortana works as you can see right there, but I didn't really use it because you have to stop typing entirely and it just takes you away from your workflow, you know. Um 
so it's really not very useful. You can change what it knows about you in the notebook, which is pretty handy. You can really customize what you want to t show Cortana. It can show you calendar appointments, you know, package tracking from your email. It can show you a lot of stuff, but if you don't want it to, it doesn't need to, which is hard to do with Google Now and Siri. Uh, but search, just search through Cortana is very awesome and way faster than 7 and Windows 8. So if I press Windows and just type in Calc, in Windows 8.1 it used to take like 2 or 3 seconds. Now it literally takes no seconds. That applies to any app. For example, the movies and TV app, boom. And then it, you can also look up movies, which is pretty pretty handy. Um, let's say I want the square root of pi. There's the square root of pi. Um, so, you know, just basic, like, math stuff, it works really, really well. For example, uh, just press Windows and type in, you know, 90 times 90 divided by 578, and it'll tell you what that is. This type of stuff was never in Windows. Uh, you'd have to, you know, open up Chrome and do it in the Omni bar or open up Calc and type it in. Things that save you, like, two seconds, but have been on Macs and Linux for quite a while. Awesome to see it come to Windows. Those type of things will really help power users. For the average consumer, Cortana isn't that useful in its current state. It will be getting updates. You know, some, some things you can ask it, it will answer. Uh, you know, I can ask it how old is Obama, and it will probably, it, it will tell me how old Obama is. But if I say, um, the NBA Finals 2015, it has no clue what I'm talking about. It'll just take me to Bing. That that sort of stuff, it's not intelligent yet. It searches, it knows some really, really basic stuff, but it's not thinking, it's not really that useful for me. It's sort of a gimmick. Uh, the next feature, feature I want to go over is Microsoft Edge. Now, Internet Explorer is not gone, it's here, but it's been hidden under Windows Accessories. So, most people will not be using it ever again. Uh, so, this is Microsoft Edge. They took the Internet Explorer rendering engine, cut off all the like the bloatware and the legacy stuff, and they made it faster. And you can feel it. This thing is fast. It's, I'd say, a little bit faster than Chrome when it comes to JavaScript. Um, it's fast, but it's also very basic. Uh, so, let's say I... Well, let's just... Let's just look up something. Hello world, right? And then I right click. I can open it. I can copy, and then I can Cortana. That's all I can do. Uh, there's no save link. There's no there's no save target as. Um, if I download something, it will take it will automatically download it to the downloads folder, and you can't change it. You cannot change where downloads happen. You can't set it to ask you every time. No, you can't do that. Uh, so some stuff like that are really, really messed up. It's really basic right now. You know, those features are coming. Extensions aren't here yet, but those are coming. You'll be able to use Chrome extensions. Those are coming. When it comes to right now, in its current state, Edge is not a very full-featured browser. You can, you know, save passwords, change your homepage, change your search engine, but not much more. You can just browse the web. You can't enjoy the web, I feel like. Um... So that's Edge. It's fast, but incredibly lightweight and basic. You've got some features. You've got a reading list, which I guess is cool. I mean, you would use it, but you can't sync it. So I can't, like, pick up my phone and access the same reading list. You can annotate web pages, which is... This might be an actually useful feature, rarely, like, very few times. And you can save it as a JPEG. This is good stuff. But I won't be using it because I won't be using Edge because I can't I can't save downloads to a particular folder. I can't save target as. It's not an advanced browser yet, but it is going to be an advanced browser. Edge is getting updates soon, like August, September soon. So definitely stay tuned for those because that will turn Microsoft Edge into an actual full-featured browser. But right now, it's fast, but it is not featured. So that's Microsoft Edge. Uh, I think I've gone over most of the main features. Uh, you know, the Universal apps have all gotten some pretty big refreshes. They're a lot better now. For example, Mail uh, is just better than what was on Windows 8. Uh, Windows 8's Mail app was just so incredibly basic. 
you really couldn't do much other than t like respond to emails and get emails. This uh, the Windows 10 app is just way better. You can set your Gmail account as default. You can just it's you know you have custom formatting in a new email, for example. You can resize it. I mean, Metro Universal apps are now you know windowed. Uh, you know, as you can see, when I click on new email, I can you know attach pictures. Uh, I've got bolding stuff as an option, so just a lot more full featured, and a lot more options as to you know signature options. Um, it's a better mail app. It's just significantly better. It's not as good as you know the mail app on a Mac or Linux, but it's getting there. It's a good. It's a huge step in the right direction for universal apps, and the same applies to pretty much every universal app. It's been improved to the point where it is really really good now. It's usable now. You know, for example, money used to be just a mess, and now it's actually a little bit organized. As you can see, it's not bug-free, uh, but it's a little bit better now. Thing You can actually use it. So, it's... What is going on? I'm pretty sure... What? Excuse me? I want one dollar. As you can see, it's not bug-free. But... In terms of UI and organization, the universal apps are looking really, really good, uh, and that's that's just awesome. I mean, Calculator is a universal app, and it's awesome. The Calculator is so much better than the Windows 8 and Windows 7 Calculator. So, just universal apps have been improved to the point where they're usable. They're now a part of the U the OS. They're not just something you uninstall as soon as you install Windows 8.1, because that's what I did. Um, so yeah, you know, in terms of performance, Windows 10 is is good. Um, Windows 8.1 brought some awesome performance improvements. Windows 10 keeps those. Uh, it boots a little bit quicker. You know, everything runs a little bit quicker. Search is way quicker, as I showed you. So everything's just a little bit quicker. If you're coming from Windows 7, this is huge in terms of performance. You're gonna see massive gains. Like it's gonna boot quicker. Everything will open quicker. Definitely upgrade from Windows 7. Windows 8.1. You're not upgrading for performance. Uh, you know, from seven, you're upgrading for performance. From eight and eight point one, you're upgrading for the UI, for just the the usability improvements. Uh, and, and both of those are just a big check, in my opinion. You've got way better UI, way more consistent UI. The entire OS is consistent, and in terms of performance, you've got the same speedy performance you had from Windows eight point one. Uh, so that's pretty much it for this video. Um, you know, there are new icons everywhere. File Explorer is unchanged for the most part. You know, everything works as it should. Uh, title bars are white for some reason, but those are coming in a change. And you can also change them in the registry, which I'll do a video about pretty soon. Uh, new icons, uh, but, and, oh, how did I forget this part? But there's, there's virtual desktops and some multitasking improvements. So if I've got a bunch of apps open... Let's just go down this list. So I've got four apps open. All tabbing works as you would expect. Uh, now Windows tab gives you task view, which is an overview of all your open apps. And finally, we have multiple desktops, a feature that's been on Macs and Linux for like five years. And now we finally get it. And that applies to universal and desktop apps. So I can drag, let's say, Edge, create a new desktop. And then I can take File Explorer, create a new desktop. And then I can just switch between them. And then Control Windows arrow key will switch between desktops. Windows tab will take me back, and then I can drag them back to the main desktop, and then close the desktop. It works perfectly. Task view is Windows tab. Task view is one of the perfect things about Windows 10. There are there is literally no bug that I have yet to see about Task view. It's awesome to see virtual desktops here. It works as you would expect. Trackpad gestures also are there. Three fingers up will get you to. Uh, task view and it actually works for me on synaptics too so it's not just precision touchpads synaptic touchpads also do that so that's awesome to see there's a tablet mode I don't have a tablet but I can still show you show you how it works so uh, your start screen menu will become a start screen it'll become full screen you can click on the hot hamburger menu to open up you know your most used apps and then you can get to all apps and stuff uh, you won't see anything in the taskbar unless you choose that option in settings, but you can click on task view to see all your open apps. It's like a multitasking button. 
You can also swipe in from the left to do that. You've got a Cortana button, which will take up the entire screen. And then you've got your back button to go back in any app throughout the system. So I, uh, and, and everything will become full screen, so you won't see a minimize button or anything. It'll just be an X button. And that applies to even desktop apps. So even File Explorer will come full screen. Um, so that's tablet mode. You can also get out of tablet mode, and it'll go back to you know what you had earlier. So, I mean, that's pretty much Windows 10. Um, in terms of stability, this is the second day that it's been out. Uh, third day. <laughs> it's surprisingly stable. Um, it's crashed on me, like, once. Once. Um, but overall, I'd say that if you want to try it, you should definitely get it. It's not going to, like, break your computer. The installation is really easy. Uh, it's stable. Everything works as you, as you would expect. Uh... All of my programs from Windows 8.1 have worked. Compatibility has not been an issue whatsoever, and it shouldn't, even if you're coming from Windows 7. Uh, everything's just been working perfectly for me. If you're scared of bugs, then wait like two more days. Microsoft is literally updating this every single day to fix those bugs. But as of right now, I would totally upgrade. That's pretty much it for this video, guys. Uh, if you want more Windows 10 coverage, definitely subscribe. You can check out my Windows 10 playlist if you want to go more in-depth into some features that I mentioned. Um, but that's pretty much it. Be sure to like this video. If you have any questions about Windows 10, if you're concerned about upgrading, any questions, leave them in the comments section, and I will answer them. And that's pretty much it for this video, so thank you for watching.